Hey y'all, this is Mark down on the Texas Gulf Coast. Many of us are just getting back on our feet after Hurricane Harvey. While we were hunkered down during the storm, I came across a poem from 1904 about the Texas town of Indianola, and it moved me to record this and share it with you. This comes from a book called Indianola and Other Poems by Jeff McLemore was published in Austin, Texas in 1904. McLemore uh, was uh, a cowboy, a printer, a newspaper reporter and publisher, state representative, and U.S. representative from Texas, amongst other things he did. And uh, he wrote a book of poems a long way back, and one of them is about Indianola and hurricanes. As you probably know, Indianola is uh, located on the Gulf Coast, about 12 miles from the Gulf of Mexico in the Matagorda Bay, near Port Lavaca in Calhoun County. And when he used to sometimes be referred to as the Queen City of the West. She was once a thriving port uh, of entry into Texas, competing with Galveston in the late 1800s. Today, Indianola reveals very little of its once glorious past from over 150 years ago, and it's kind of a small little fishing village getaway place, nice, a nice place, but very different from what it was 150 years ago. The poem itself is more of a historical portrait, uh, or timeline, perhaps, than, uh, than anything else, connecting our past with the events we're seeing this week. So I thought it might be appropriate to revisit this poem at this time. I hope you connect with it in our history. Perhaps it will strike a chord. I know it did for me. Indianola, an o'er true tale of flood and tide. When some fair maid the flower of her race, whose charms proclaim her queen of love and grace, by fate's dread hand is hurled into the grave, or without warning sinks beneath the wave. That darkening sorrow of her hapless end falls like a pall o'er each devoted friend. No tears are shed, our deep and silent grief in bitter groans can only seek relief. And as we watched that pulseless form so fair, And viewed death's beauty slowly settling there, A thought of terror strikes across the heart, Quick as the flash the thunder clouds impart, Then kneeling down we look to heaven and pray, O oh God, restore to us this silent clay, Give back that smile, if but one fleeting hour, That we once more might feel its tender power. But all is still, the form is cold to death, And chilled forever is that fleeting breath. No more, no more those lips will ever speak, No more will blush that cold and marble cheek, No more will glow that dull and listless eye, No more that breast will heave a lingering sigh. Like flowers that bloom, yet fade at set of sun, Her life's dream ended, ere it scarce begun. So, Indianola, has it been with thee, thou once fair city by the moonlit sea, thy fame is ended and thy beauty fled, bleak memory calls thee from the silent dead, thy streets are nameless and the seaweeds grow along the walks where life was wont to flow, forever dead, for e'er thy dream is o'er, Thou livest alone on memory's barren shore. The sun that sets, yet sets to rise again, Will smile the same, yet smile on thee in vain. While moonbeams dancing as the billows roar, Will seem as bright, yet dance on thee no more. Tis eve, beside the murmuring sea, a thousand hearts beat light and free, A thousand voices fill the air, And all is peace and pleasure there. On the still bosom of the bay The white-winged vessels calmly lay, 
The night birds skim the rippling waves. Sweet echoes come from ocean's caves. And Indianola, fair and bright, sits peaceful there in the pale moonlight. The lamps burn bright in pleasure's halls, while beauty from her bower calls. Fond pleasure decks each throbbing brow. The lover tells his plighted vow. All is joy and peace serene, till sleep, sweet sleep, falls o'er the scene. Then hushed and still and heavenly fair is that loved city sleeping there. Tis morn, the radiant eastern sky is tinted with rainbow's dye. The swan-like vessels rest at ease, scarce swaying in the freshening breeze. The songbirds sing from every tree, or bathe their plumage in the sea, while hurrying footsteps tread the main, and Indianola wakes again. Yes, wakes once more to busy life, but wakes, alas, for war and strife. For bugle calls sound from afar, the heralding of approaching war. The echo leaps from mouth to mouth, awake ye heroes of the south, and Indianola's sons go forth to fight the tumults from the north. How swift they went, tis vain to tell, for home they fought and fighting fell, and falling died in manhood's prime to sleep in some far distant clime. Oh, Indianola, could I trace the glory of that glorious race, Thou gavest when came thy country's call, or view each hero in his fall. In deathless strains my song would be, for those who died, for thine and thee. Over the fathomless waters of the dark blue ocean, like the song of a bird when its mate is no more, when its carols are filled with a soul-sad emotion, and it fain would call back from the echoless shore. One note it had known for the song that is ended, when it sighs for that death which can bring only rest. So the echo of sweet peace in that moment was blended, while hope turned to grief in each fond southern breast. And in that dark hour, though the storm clouds were over, and the stars breaking through them seemed rayless and dead, Indianola sat there like a grief-stricken lover, when her hero is fallen and all hope is fled. She wept for those sons that so proudly she gave, for a cause which, though lost, was made doubly more dear, like a heartbroken mother who weeps at the grave. Of her heart's fondest treasure, she wept over their beer. Then she turned from a scene that she gazed on with dread. She had shed all the tears that she well mo now might shed. War's wild strife is over, the bugle calls cease. Like a dismantled warrior, she clasped hands with sweet peace. The rose that was withered, its verdant leaves spread. The violet, so modest, once more lifts its head. The sun shines again on that once blighted shore, and fair Indianola, like the rose, blooms once more. Tis night. A dark and angry cloud hangs o'er the city like a shroud. The lightning's quick and lurid glare on each pale face reveals despair. The storm has come. Wild ocean's roar breaks with a shriek upon the shore. Brave men stand palsied, trembling, pale, and mother's prayer, the infant's wail. Commingle with mad ocean's rage and form a scene on history's page. More awful than the poet's pen can write, nor can the tongues of men relate that picture of despair which in a moment settled there. And many a loved one found a grave for our beneath the maddening wave. Once more, tis morn, the bright sun smiles in splendor o'er the storm-wrecked isles that stand like sentries in the bay nearby where Indianola lay. All desolate and bleak they stand, death shadows traced on every hand, while round the moans the plaintive sea, as if it felt some sympathy for the dread terror it had brought to those within its tempest caught. Yet on the beach the scene seemed saddest, 
for there old ocean's waves were maddest, and though the sun shines there as bright, to those who live it seems as night. O'er Indianola hangs a pall, dark as the dreary clouds that fall. O'er battlefields where thousands slain lie there to rise no more again. Death and destruction hover around the ocean's charts, a dreary sound. The father weeps above of his child. The mother, in distraction wild, seeks out her babe but seeks in vain, then wrings her hands in woe and pain. The proud, the humble, share the same. So with the sick, the blind, the lame, no peace is there save with the dead. All hope for those who live is fled. And Indianola from her throne is claimed by ocean as its own. No brush can paint, no pen can write the sorrow of that dismal night when storm-wrecked Indianola lay a specter by the lonely bay. This is the tale as it was told to me by one who dwelt there by the treacherous sea. A sad, sad tale, no matter what we say though poorly told in the still poorer lay. The story of a city once as fair as her loved maids who dwelt in pleasure there, swept from the earth without a moment's thought, torn from her throne by ocean's tireless wave, a memory of the ruined terror wrought, sunk, sunk forever in a nameless grave.